There are many things that go into making an impactful image, but I believe that half the equation to making a photo stand out is all in how you edit that image. I'm gonna break down my photo editing process that I use for every single image that I take to ensure that I walk away with the best images possible. If you don't take away anything else from this video, the one concept that I want you to remember is to always separate your subjects from their environment. Now, there are obviously best practices when photographing your subject out in the field, which I talked about in a recent video, which I'll actually link here. Our goal is when a viewer sees our image, they should know exactly where they should be looking. That's that's the mark of an effective image. And the best way that we can do this is through color and lighting. The human eye is drawn to saturated colors and bright highlights. If we look at this image, where does your eye go? It would naturally want to go to the red in the image. And with this shot, where are you looking at a first glance? Your eye naturally wants to look at the sun. Within the case of the dirt bike rider, your eye immediately goes to that pop of red within the scene because it's a bright saturated color. And that's why this image is so effective is because the viewer isn't distracted by the environment around the subject. Now, when we look at the image of the wake surfer, I purposely backlit my subject with the sun just peeking out a little bit beside her. If we take that concept that the eye is more attracted to the brighter parts of an image, the viewer's eye is going to go right to my subject because the bright highlights of the sun is directing the attention to that point in the image. Let me show you how I apply these techniques within my images. So when I'm editing photos, the one thing that I keep in mind is the role of complementary colors within my image. So we're going to take this image and I'm going to show you what an amateur would do versus what I do in order to make an image pop. So within this image here, my rider was wearing this teal blue and it was like a sunrise look. So it was kind of like that golden hour vibe. And what I really want to do is make make this grass match the environment of the sun so that those two blended properly so that my subject was the main focus because if the grass was like some off yellow or weird yellow which it could have been and I'll show you exactly what it could have looked like then it would really distract and take away from the blue within this rider and let me show you a before and an after so this is the before so the grass obviously wasn't as warm and the sun obviously needed a little bit more warmth as well but I'm going to show you exactly how an amateur would do it versus how I did it. So constantly what I'd see is I would see, you know, like you'd have the exposure brought up, you'd have your levels all brought up, whatnot, you'd adjust that. But then this is the biggest mistake is right off the bat, I see the saturation just boosted. And then most of the times they'll just leave it. They'll just leave it here. And as you can see, they'll be like, oh yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. Personally, the color of the sun and the color of the grass, yeah, it's matching okay. But at the same time, that is not flattering whatsoever to this shirt and to the overall environment. So if we go into our color grading tab and we look at the opposite spectrum of that teal, so let's say that the teal is within this area right here. So that's where the teal is. Where is the opposite? It's sitting in like this deeper orange and that is sitting more so up in like this yellowy green. So like what we want for complementary colors is we want that to be sitting on the opposite spectrum so that this highlighted color will match and complement this teal color. So okay, some people might have the intuition to do this. So they'll move down the yellow slider to about here, but there's still one problem. The problem is the luminance in the grass. And so, the luminance, the hue, and the saturation, they all tie in together in order to make a pleasing color and a pleasing shot. So watch what happens if I reduce the luminance on this yellow. Just look within this grass section here, not too much, just a little bit. I'm gonna bring it back up to about minus 14. So look at what this did before and after, before and after. So like it takes a little bit of that sting out of the grass but now what's happening is there is still a little bit too much saturation within this area. And you might be wondering, okay, well, what about these highlights? Those highlights can be adjusted by the color grading tab afterwards. But what we really need to do is this color of the grass is really taking away from my rider. So what I'm going to do is, as I said, the hue, saturation, luminance, they all tie in together to make a proper color. So if I remove the luminance out of that, look at how much it takes the sting out of this. And as you bring up the highlights within the color grading tab, let's just do this quick, just for the sake of this video, let's push the same hue color. Now it is that much more pleasing to the image because the sting isn't so much in that grass and the focus isn't so much on the grass. It just looks as though it's the glow from the sun. So watch what happens if we get rid of the saturation and the luminance adjustments. This looks way too bright. And as I said, the eye is more attracted to the brighter parts of an image. So what we need to do is as we did before, 
lower the luminance, lower the saturation, and it just flows so much better into the image. Now our view is on the rider because this is the most saturated part of the image. That is what we want. Okay, so now as we go into our second concept of shaping an image with light, we're gonna look at this image here. Okay, so I already color graded this image and it does look cool, but at the same time, your eye is kind of wandering. I don't feel like there's a specific goal on our subject to say, oh, this is what I'm looking at right here. Yes, the subject is silhouetted and there is like some bright parts within this dust that's being kicked up, but I still think that we can do a better job at this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my mask tool here. And the first thing that I'm going to do that I always like doing first is grabbing a linear gradient tool. I like pulling up from the bottom because I don't want the bottom of my scene to be as noticeable. I want it to fade out from darker to lighter into my scene and into my frame. So generally what I'm doing is I'm pulling a very light feather. So as you can see, the parts that are highlighted in red is the feather. And so as I pull that out, you can see that's affecting more of the image, but I'm just gonna scale it back because I want it to affect only the dirt in the front part of this image. So I'm just going to lower the exposure here and look at this does. I'm gonna turn the eye off and on, off and on. So as you can see, it's already doing its job by directing your attention more to the subject and less towards the bottom of the frame. So if I wanted to, generally what I do is I lower the blacks as well, just to really darken that. And I don't want the mask to feather too, too much into my subject. I wanna keep it really clean. Now, if we really want our subject to pop, I'm gonna show you a really cool tool. So we're gonna hit the plus icon up here and I'm gonna go to select subject and watch what this does. It selected my subject and it did a pretty dang good job. And as you can see, there's a couple spots that weren't touched. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to add and I'm going to go to brush. So you can make that bigger, smaller, just by the size here, just make that a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna brush in the parts that I want highlighted here. And I think we're pretty good. Pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do as I'm gonna click on the mask too, again, just to go back to these regular adjustments. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale out and then I'm going to raise up the exposure ever so slightly. I love to raise the clarity because I feel like it adds a little bit of punch, but when you add the clarity, it also adds some highlights. So I'm just gonna dip those highlights back down, pump a bit of contrast, raise up the exposure ever so slightly again. And let's see what this does here. So I'm gonna turn this mask off and on, off, and on. So it is bringing more attention to my subject. So let's just turn off both of these masks just to see what it is exactly doing. So I'm gonna turn this off and on, off and on. So this really is doing a whole lot to our image. And generally what I love to do is I like doing another linear gradient and from the side really feathering it in, bringing it over, tilting it out, dipping that exposure back a little bit more because the tree would create a little bit more shade at night. And so I think that that is fitting. And then if I were to go out of my mask, go to effects, and then I could really pump a vignette here. So if I bring the amount down and then feather that mid-tone, and I'm going to feather that out even more. So let's turn this off and on, off and on. So it's really gradual, really feathered, but it still is doing its job, which is what we wanted to bring more attention to our subject. So if we turn this off and on, off, and on. You can see exactly just how much this is doing to make our image that much better, make it pop so that the viewer knows, hey, this is where I'm supposed to be looking when I see this photo. So those are the two ways that I attack all my action sports photos to make sure that I come out with the most impactful photos possible. If you're looking for more photo editing tips and techniques, I think you'll like this video where I talk about mastering your photo editing in just seven steps. All right, I'll see you over in that video. Peace.